and that's now the Super Coney simulator. You can see here the flight engineer's desk with all the instruments to control the engines, tanks, all the mechanical. The job of the flight engineer is to control the engines, mixture, throttle, uh, propeller uh, pitch, which is here for example, that's the throttle levers. Um, there is a setting for, that's the mixture levers for the carburetor. Then we have supercharger, it has two stages, so normally you fly in the first stage, which is uh, here, and then for the second stage you have to move that lever and you engage the second stage supercharger. It's like a compressor and you need the second stage for um, higher altitudes. Then the flight engineer also has to check the uh, engine ignition, which can be done here. That's an oscilloscope built in into the desk here. There is the oscilloscope tube underneath. And the selector switch is here. We have 18 cylinders per engine. And here we can say which engine we want to see or if we want to see only uh, ignition, sy ignition system A or B. One, three right, three left, both left, right, right and both. So if you choose both you have the picture of the two ignition systems. There are always two systems per engine. So for redundancy and also for uh, a better um, ignition. Then we have uh, engine RPM, always two engines per instrument. We have fuel quantity for a lot of tanks and fuel quantity total, which is uh, added together from the single tanks. We have a speed indicator, altitude, um, cowl flaps, that's the cooling flaps of the engines that can be open and closed. So the entire um, panel here has no function in the simulator, but it is of course important in the real uh, airplane. There we have fuses, circuit breakers, and they are in, they're in, and when they pop out you probably have an overload or uh, another problem. Then we have uh, the dome light here, can be set on or off, the cockpit light. And that's the electric panel. We have DC amps, we have DC generators, DC volts. That's the switch to uh, which generator we want to see on the instrument. It's like a multimeter. A lot of warning lamps, they are not connected. Normally they work like that. If you push them, they will light up. And if you turn them, you can make them dim or bright. So they have a push to test function. There is basically a switch inside. Well, I will show you how to start an engine. First, you have to set the engine selector switch to the engine number you want to start. The light goes on telling you that the engine selector switch is no longer on off position. You push the start button and then you wait until the engine has made three or four revolutions. This is important because 
uh, on a radial engine it's po uh, possible that the lower cylinders uh, fill up with oil and if you start the engine right away with ignition on uh, this will destroy your, en your engine because when the piston goes down hammers on the oil it will uh, knock out the cylinder and if you start, uh, only turn the engine with the starter button the starter motor will simply be blocked uh, it will stop and nothing uh, will happen to the engine and the flight engineer has to climb out um, unscrew the uh, ignition uh, the spark plugs and drain the oil and then you can start the engine so you push that for one two three four uh, revolutions you count the propeller blades well and after three revolutions of the engine you switch the ignition switch of that engine to both so both ignition ignition systems are working and the engine will start running of course in, in reality it's a little bit more complicated because a flight engineer has to adjust mixture and everything but that's how it works here in the simulator and when we are already looking up we can also look at this lever here on the ceiling that's the emergency shutoff for uh, engine gasoline and engine oil so if for example your engine is in flames you will shut off the oil hydraulic oil uh, also the fuel dump levers here if you put them into this direction you can uh, dump the fuel from the tanks which is uh, necessary if you want to land with full tanks or better you cannot land with full tanks so you have to uh, make the airplane lighter by dumping fuel then you may also have noticed that the seats the pilot seats are not exactly the same that's because one is the version of 1953 and the other one is from 1955 the upholstery is new i made that myself and there are three levers to uh, adjust seat height the position and the inclination of the rest here we do also have oxygen bottles with the distributor panel this is of course only fake here in the cockpit well and that's the view from the pilot seat we have on the left side a panel with all the exterior lights it also has some uh, two switches here for flares that's because this has been a army version of the super coney so that's emergency flares that's some pyrotechnic uh, lighting that shoot out from the bottom of the airplane uh, they sail down on a on a parachute to illuminate the uh, everything uh, for about five minutes or so maybe enough for an emergency landing maybe not uh, the little wheel here that's the nose wheel steering it's called the tailor this is used when you roll on the ground to steer the airplane at low speed because the big wheel here is for the tail uh, fin and that is only effective at higher speeds of course then there is the center console here between the pilots we have the landing gear lever which must be pulled out going to neutral and for the up position you have to pull that safety level here I won't do that now because we are on the ground and it's always a bad idea to pull up the gear while on the ground well it shouldn't happen anything because there is a safety switch but you never know uh, there are stories that pilots have tried that and they crash the airplane while standing 
then we have an autopilot that's this thing here you can see the switch it on or off there is altitude control so this lever here is to select the direction so when the autopilot is on you can steer the entire airplane with this knob here into the di right direction and when it flies into the right direction you leave it straight on and here on the side is a wheel it's the same wheel here that's for the altitude so you uh, watch your altimeter then you select your altitude here up and down and when you have it you press the altitude on and it keeps the altitude as selected then we have flight path localizer that's a switch for the radio um, navigation instruments and next to it is the windshield wiper which is of course here and there is something interesting about that windshield wiper that's the gear of the windshield wiper and it has a flexible, flex, uh, a flexible shaft here and the motor is way up here so the motor is now not installed it would be ab about here and I think the reason for that is you have here in the center of the airplane you have a magnetic compass and if you uh, position a DC electric motor with strong magnets next to the compass it will simply show rubbish so that's certainly because uh, why they put the windshield wiper motor back in the rear then we have the overhead panel there is everything about uh, radar yes this airplane had a radar inside by the way down on the disc cover between the seats was the radar tube uh, where you could see the pictures of clouds and mountains and it was more a uh, weather radar than a traffic radar then there is all the uh, radio communication stuff, VHF, uh, frequency, so uh, this panel is simply put together with modules I had lying around so it's probably not really, uh, it doesn't make all, all sense here but that's how it looked like in the old days. That's a switch you probably have heard about that's the command bell that's the signal in the cabin when the pilot wants to tell the passengers something landing lights uh, panel lights they are on bright all the lights are dimmable now we can see that with the camera light on uh, control booster that's the servo controls of uh, elevators and ailerons in an emergency you can switch that off and fly completely manually but then you need two pilots because it really needs some strength to uh, move all these things okay i think we should make a short flight here on this runway i don't know where exactly we are but well, it's a simulator, we can do whatever we want. So, let's see if I still know how it works. The first thing is to climb on the seat and adjust the seat position. Okay, seat is locked. Uh, flaps yes flap indicator is working uh, elevator trim is neutral let's give it a little bit up 
propeller pitch. Okay. Uh, so let's turn to the left and let's see if we find the runway. That looks like a taxiway. So I'm steering with my feet. Here in the simulator, normally we would use the um, tailor wheel. Okay, I'm already a bit fast. So, see if the brakes are working. Not really. So let's roll through the grass. I don't know why the brakes are not working, but I think we're going off-road a little bit. Okay, so let's roll to the end of the runway. Oh, now it, I know where we are. We are in the canton of Valais. That's the city of Sion with the castle. Okay, let's see what we can do here. So that's the four throttle, throttle levers for the four engines and the red levers here, if you pull them back, there's a light going on here. That's the propeller reverse that turns the propeller blades into the other direction. You can actually uh, roll the airplane backwards in this setting. But you shouldn't do that too fast because if you brake you can hit the runway with your uh, with your rear so when the airplane tips over okay we have here manifold pressure that's the pressure inside the intake manifold of the engine so if when the, en uh, the engine is stopped you see here the normal air pressure and when the engine is running you see a lower pressure because the engine is sucking air in creating a small vacuum in the intake manifold then we have rpm engine uh, revolutions per minute this can be so the principle is so you set the power so that means you open the throttle in the carburetor and then you use this little lever here to adjust the propellers for the right uh, revolutions per minute for the right RPM. So this is uh, something like a, a gear in a, in a car. So when you start you 
uh, set the uh, propeller to a flat angle, giving you more thrust at higher uh, RPM and then and at low speed. And if you're going faster, you're setting it to a higher pitch and therefore the engine RPM will come down. We have a wing flaps uh, lever here, that's the landing flaps or the takeoff position and there is an indicator for that so if that shows you uh, if this one doesn't move you know you have a problem in the mechanical uh, system okay let's have a look into the simulator um, technology here how is it interfaced to the computers so we have two computers here uh, we need two computers for all the interfaces we have there are two standard interfaces for the pilot and the co-pilot they are from SimKits that's a, a, a company from Holland and the problem is you cannot have two of these interfaces on the same computer so we need two small computers just to uh, have the two interfaces pilot and co-pilot connected uh, most simulator builders build a, a single pilot uh, airplane they don't have that problem okay let's walk around and by the way the cockpit windows here and also the windshield wipers or the original from the airplane which I showed you before that's the section that was actually cut away from the original airplane also the seats and everything inside all the switches or most of the switches and instruments are original or have been replaced by original looking instruments um, from SimKits. So here we have two curved screens, curved uh, LCD screens. They make a perfect view, although they are a little bit too close to the airplane, so uh, the distance feeling is not exactly the greatest. And here, right in the front of the simulator, underneath the uh, screens there is the maintenance hatch that can be opened and here we see the pedals of the co-pilot and the pilot from the other side and there is the entire electronic stuff you can see the instruments with the standard um, RC servos here they go to this servo interface card that connects through the USB connector here to one of the PCs. Then this is the co-pilot interface. You see we have a lot of free sockets here for more instruments that are not needed in the Super Coney. And that's the same for the pilot, also with an USB power and a lot of cables going to all kind of instruments like the ultimator there are also instruments this one for example is still an original but it is not used uh, i don't know which one is it right now there are the indicator lamps each one has three uh, connections ground uh, 24 volts for the test and the signal is this gray cable here that goes down to other interfaces which are located here in the center pedestal power distribution we need 12 24 and 5 volt uh, here we can see the mechanical stuff for the throttles the throttle levers are somewhere above here then i have chosen to install uh, steel cables that go around that rolls here and then they drive linear potentiometers 
and that interfaces to an analog interface board which then connects to the flight simulator and the flight simulator software is Microsoft Flight Simulator or maybe they have updated it now to another uh, simulator I don't know that exactly okay there are gas springs instead of the original uh, hydraulic uh, cylinders and we have some magnetic switches here for the brakes so if you push the pedal down like so that's braking and if you move them in this direction that's uh, steering the airplane it goes a little bit hard so this is all made by uh, cables and pulleys and under the uh, floor of the cockpit there are all the power supplies power distribution yeah it basically needs a 24 volt power supply a 5 volt and a 12 volt and that's how they look like of course we need a third pc a bigger one to drive the display okay that's about it thanks for watching